or I have to question is having, you know, is having three martinis too much? Well, if you ask the question, that means it's probably too much. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Yes, I'm Still Sober, John Rabin. Hi, guys. I just realized I'm finally, this is episode six, is it? It is six. I'm finally comfortable with this. By with this, I mean microphone, pauses, not having a strict schedule of shit to talk about for the next half hour. I'm comfortable with all of it. (laughs) <laughs> I'm also comfortable with the idea that uh, ideas I may have come up with early on, I'm probably ditching. Mm. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, I just got back from uh, lunch with my two brothers and my dad. We went to my workplace and ate burgers and stuff. It was good. It was nice. It was funny because my uh, brother James had asked me, about this thing that I was doing. And I'm like, you mean the podcast? He goes, yeah, how do I hear it? And I went blank. Like, how do, how does he, get, how does he get this? And I'm like, I get an app. The, I use Stitcher. I don't know. That's it. He has an iPhone. I'm like, well, then use iTunes because I don't use iTunes. And I'm like, well, I, I realized a man in his 40s trying to tell another man in his 40s how to do something that neither of them really know anything about. I mean, I know podcast. I know enough to, to, to get it going, but to try to explain to somebody how to hear this, is it suddenly I'm going, oh, you know what? This is why I reach dozens of people a week. It's because the people that would like me don't know how the fuck to do a podcast. How do I get it on my phone? What's the thingy I got to do to hear that thing you do? (laughs) So that might be an issue. Eh, It's fine. Google it. That's what, of course, if you're hearing this, you know how to get on the podcast already. Uh, Speaking of older people who like me, some of the, there, there may be a couple of you listening that may remember this. There was years ago, I would say probably from 1999 to about 2002, 2003. So that's like four years. Four years of my comedy was dedicated to the injustice of terrible music. I used to really, you could tell that was the one thing I was passionate about was how bad country music was and how shitty rock and roll was at the time. Because that was like the heyday of uh, Limp Biscuit, which I I made fun of Limp Biscuit for years. Holy shit. Just worthless bit after worthless bit about Fred Durst and his stupid goddamn red base, Yankees baseball cap. I just... Ugh. And, and then I see... Because <laughs> I, uh, I see a flyer for a show... There's a show called uh, Louder Than Life, this festival, and it's it's insane. These are the people that are performing at the Louder Than Life festival in Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Alice in Chains, Limp Biscuit, Slash, and his band, Suicidal Tendencies, Godsmack, Bush, Body Count, Seven Dust, Gwar, Nine Inch Nails, Deftones, Primus, Billy Idol, Clutch. I don't know what... Monster Magnet. This is this year. This is happening in September. It's... That's insane. I... And honestly, I would watch all of those bands except for Limp Bizkit. I'm I'm just kidding. I, I don't think I would sit... Imagine me as a festival... I can barely stand being in public with just a few people. I'm just, like, irritable. Just, I don't know what it is. I know what it is. Just, 
need to get my title. But anyway, I, yeah, I used to, uh, but I kind of, I really lightened up. Like I just, I finally got, I even have a, a bit about how you should just like what you like and, and quit uh, changing your ta- your public taste to be how cool you are. And just, if you like something that's shitty, just like it. Like I realized that I love ABBA and Ario Speedwagon, which doesn't fit anything else that I listen to. But I love Ario Speedwagon and I really like ABBA. I'm going to listen to them. So I've got no problem. But the, and and the whole idea that Nickelback has been like the butt of jokes for for years when they're not the worst band out there and i i I just would my my bit was about the fact that uh, free will is a myth so like nickelback if you like them because you know you are who you are um now all that being said because i have i have calmed down about your musical taste you're gonna you're gonna like who you like just it's fine it's preference. Some, you know, obviously some bands are worse than others. Some are, you know, there are gen- musical geniuses and then there are music, musically handicapped people who have record contracts. I, I get that and, and that's fine. However, it just yesterday when I took a lift from, H-E, from, from my grocery store back home, because I so I was stuck list, having to listen to whatever was on the radio and the and I wasn't going to ask him to change it but I was stuck and they he had the song playing was uh, Love Walks In by Van Halen and I realized that I have never really just listened to some of the songs during the Van Hagar years because even you know early on, I was always told that David Lee Roth, Van Halen was what you listen to, you know, the first time around. And then when it switches over to Sammy Hagar taking over, you're like, no, don't. So it's, I've always been that way, you know. And even when I've tried listening to fifty one fifty and O U eight one two and whatever, I I'm like, yeah, this is garbage. So it's always been garbage. But that song kept me hostage and made me so angry at how terrible that song is it's it's unbelievable like i pulled up because i was i had to listen to it so i was listening to the lyrics for the first time to really like because i I just was i was there i was being held hostage by sammy hagar and with lyrics like and i'm gonna read them real quick and then you sense a change nothing feels the same all your dreams are strange. Love comes walking in. Some kind of alien, what? Some kind of alien waits for the opening, then simply pulls a string. Love comes walking in. That doesn't, I, Jesus, I don't, it's baffling how terrible that song is. And I really, like I said, musical preference, you can like what you like, but holy shit, man. If you like the Sammy Hagar era of Van Halen, there's something fucking wrong with you. You really, I, I know that goes against what I just said, but there, you can't like actual rock music and like that. I, I don't think it's possible. It's just, it's, do you realize that, that 5150 came out two years after Jump? They went to that, that's a, that's a really far drop to go from hot hot for teacher to that horrible piece of shit song in 2 years mm. panama to that how do you not see how maybe it's just the 80s man maybe cocaine i don't know what it is anyway yeah so uh fuck van halen and uh <laughs> just in general except for those uh, except for like 20 songs off those first four albums but that's, that's so so I was thinking about the James Gunn thing the director of Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2 who lost his job because of tweets from 
eight year, ten years ago, nine years ago. Um, the other, the thing about that is, is that uh, which he's probably going to get his job back since the entire cast and crew is behind him, and we can only hope. Otherwise, that third movie is going to be shit. You understand that, right? It's, I guess that, and but it, it's all about. I don't know. This right wing group is like attacking different people. Pat Oswalt and different, and they went after Anthony Jeselnik, which is hilarious to me. Of all the people to go after, you go after the guy whose persona is sociopath. He's not gonna fold. But it made me think about my own Twitter feed that I don't use, but still up there. Not that I have anything, because I'm not famous, so it doesn't matter. But not that I have anything that would come back and bite me on the ass in that way. It's more of a it made me think about my Twitter feed because I don't want really unfunny shit brought up. Like like oh yeah. He's good now and successful, but look at these terrible jokes that are extremely unfunny and hack. Like that's that's my that would be my fear is is hack shit brought up. <laughs> Back when I uh, was trying out Twitter and I didn't know what I was doing. So, and also I thought about the, any tweets or anything that I posted while I was still fucked up, either from drinking or doing, or, or doing heroin. So I thought this happened earlier today. I decided, you know what? I'm going to go back and just delete everything right up to when I, I, I sobered up. So, so I got in there and I started scrolling through. I don't have a whole lot of tweets, so I don't know how there's probably there's got to be a shortcut but i i don't know it to delete like early stuff there's no they should that should really be a feature it's like a, a, a cya feature where you can go back and like yeah delete everything in 2009 please like i wish that that was a thing so i start scrolling back and it takes a while so i'm scrolling and i'm scrolling and i really commit to doing this i'm like scrolling through and i I see a couple of tweets in 2013. I'm like, ah, wow, that's dated. Just delete it. And I keep going through, and I finally get down. And I'm in. I get down to uh, middle of the year 2012, and I discover that I've already deleted everything before 2012. I've had this idea before. Yeah, I already deleted everything prior to when I sobered up. <laughs> so. Anyway, life is a flat circle, apparently, on Twitter. So I already did that. Well, that was a nice waste of my morning. But, you know, I, I suppose that's better than watching just another YouTube video for no reason. So, all right, so I have a couple of articles that uh, I was looking at. So I thought that's what we would do today. And uh, one of them is, this is in Forbes, and it's uh, Demi Lovato's struggle with addiction highlights the risk of relapse. And as we learned about Demi Lovato's hospitalization, I'm sober, I, I, I swear, related to reported heroin use yesterday, the reality is that beating addiction and staying sober over the long term is not an easy feat to accomplish. You hear that, everybody? It's not easy to be sober. Forbes says so. The truth is that the odds for relapse are steep unless you receive ongoing social support, counseling, and medication-assisted therapy while going through withdrawal, which has been proven to reduce the risk of relapse. Yeah, I don't know. Everybody's different. That's the thing, is that everybody has their own process. Like, AA didn't work for me. Uh, which I will say this about that. I had to go to meetings, first off, because it, probation required you to go to a certain number of meetings a week. And I actually think that that hindered me, because... By being forced to go, you get so used to the to everything, and it's just uh, this is an AA meeting again. You know, you just kind of go. 
and I, and I know that they say in there that they have some people that uh, if you if you're not into the program to fake it until you make it. That's a that's an actual saying, by the way. Fake it till you make it. As if if you if you go through the motions long enough, at some point you'll brainwash yourself into believing it. I guess. Which maybe that does work for some people. It didn't for me. It actually did the did the opposite. I got so used to it that by the time I finally got around years later to wanting help, I was so burnt out and convinced that AA was not going to work that it didn't for me. That I, I couldn't even tackle having yet another sponsor and doing the different steps. So I think that actually forcing, because the only way it works is if you believe it and if you try. So the idea of forcing it onto somebody, it I think it's, it's counterproductive. And I, I'm not really sure if probation does that anymore, makes you go to meetings. But anyway, I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, the bottom line is that rates of relapse ultimately vary depending on the substance being abused. Well, no shit. For, ob- for opiate addiction, the rates are quite high with an 85% chance of relapse one year after ending use. Yeah. Man, we love our painkillers. If you're really hooked on painkillers, it's really hard to shake that shit. Um, okay, that's enough of that one. There is there is this one article I wanted to bring up that's, that's from the Albuquerque Journal. Oh, my God. Now, <laughs> what draw what got my attention to it is the the headline. The headline is "Poet aims to end stigma of, of addiction through her art," and my reaction to that is, "No, please don't, no, <laughs> don't. You don't have to do a poem, uh, man. That's that's fine." There is uh, in the article, though, because it's it's a the poet. It, it's about her, her son OD'd and died, and she's being interviewed by somebody else who also had had a son that died from uh, overdose. So here's a, here's the paragraph that that really stuck out that I'm not making that I'm not going to mock, although I will mock bad art. I just don't. Maybe I'm just not uh, not to end poetry. Anyway, it is easy for others who have not dealt with drug addiction to lay blame. That's true. It's very easy. In fact, it's easy for others who have not dealt with anything to lay blame about everything. That actually, that's that's, that's not just an addiction thing. That's all what we do. We have you know zero empathy. And every time, you know, we immediately treat every single issue and every single thing that we read. We can't just read news. We have to treat it like it's a fucking sporting event where you have to pick a side and then all of a sudden you're just like, ah, these people. And it's just, ugh. And it doesn't do anything. It just makes you feel better and then other people read your bullshit and it just keeps churning up this cycle of hate. It's, it's great, isn't it? Anyway, uh Sharing my story of my son's death in 2017 of a heroin overdose left me open to stinging criticisms that I was a bad mom to have raised a junkie who hadn't deserved to live. And man, that is... Oh, and um, Moffat, the, the poet, said the stigma and the shaming are reminiscent of the early days of the AIDS epidemic. Oh my God, the hatefulness and the blame and the ugliness then. One wonders if many of those who became sick might have lived longer had we started talking about it sooner. Had we started saying that that it was a terrible disease, not just stupidity or carelessness or worse, and we need to find a cure. Yeah. Man, I I barely remember that because that was... Yeah, because I was young then, but, uh, but I remember when it was... It was re- people were just really judgmental about that, and they're they're kind of backing down now. Um, it it blows my mind, and it, this is only because of who I'm around all the time. I'm you know being in Austin, of course, is different. Uh, being around people who who trucks all the time, um, 
I keep forgetting that there still is, there still are a lot of people out there who, who think that an addiction problem is like a is like a flaw that, and it's you, you blame the the people, you blame the parents is the weirdest thing, because especially with me, because I was raised really well, In a loving home. I got. You know, I I was in a bunch of different. I was in, you know, the the National Honor Society. I was in Just Say No. Ironically, I played football. I was in band. I was an honor student. I did a essentially because my my parents taught me that I couldn't quit anything. I just if I didn't want to do it, I I could just not do it the next year. Like you finished out your term and you and you did it. You know, and and. That's the thing is I, I have a I have an ethic because of that I have a work ethic and you know I don't you don't quit something you finish it and then if you you know then the next time you just don't do it when the season's over or whatever and um, but none of that had anything to do but I still became like an alcoholic and a junkie it didn't have anything to do with them it had everything to do with this is what I wanted to do I knowingly got into all this shit because I thought it was cool. By the way, I still think booze and drugs are cool. I, I do. It's just, you're not going to shake that. It's in there. It's just not, I mean, and that's how I got out of it was because you certainly, you finally get to a point where your life's, you know, just like I, in order to live, I got to keep going. And also, how old are you, buddy? You can't, you're not cool anymore. If you're, you know, you're drinking around people who are 22 and you're almost 40 and it's, you know, and when you're past the heroin chic stage of heroin and now you're just junkie, junkie's not as cool as heroin chic at all. Infections are not cool. Dying all the time's not really that awesome. So you finally just get it, you, you have to get to a point. The problem is you get to a point and it's just easier to keep going. Uh, luckily, I bottomed out without dying and then, you know, I was able to get into rehab. But that's... The, the idea that you can blame someone's parents for the way they are, I mean, everybody's different. The, just the assumption there is just mind-blowing. People can judge anybody that they don't even know just because of the, well, obviously, they fucked up. That's why, you know, it's them. They don't understand. Just, just everything, man. ODing. Suicide too, just uh, people need to mind their own fucking business. That's what they need to do. They need to, you know, everybody judges. Just don't. You don't have to say it out loud. How how do you not keep it in your head? It, uh, you know, how can I make the world a be- better place? Maybe don't talk so much. Not every opinion needs to be out in the out in the open. It's that's that's how you make you know sure recycle if you want but how about you shut the fuck up some I mean I'm doing it on the podcast that's what I'd rather do I talk less on social media and I and I dump it on the podcast this is my outlet you have to come find me to listen to some bullshit that I gotta say Ugh. but just people think, you know what I think hmm all right. That's not fun. Anyway, yeah, addiction's an issue. I don't know if I would call it a disease anymore. It's more of a brain, but it is in your head. It's a brain disorder. And I don't think they'll ever find a cure for it, but there's, uh, you know, I hope that, uh, I hope it gets better. I mean, I hope that there's funding. I hope more funding gets, gets made for, for people like us. Because we need it, man. Mm. Sorry, I'm pausing. I'm just like sitting there going, damn. Shit's fucked up, bro. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Ah, yeah. Anyway, if you're listening to this and you're sober, man, I, I, hope, I hope you are. I hope things are, things are going well. Hang on, I gotta pause this thing for a second. All right. 
I love that I said hold on when it's just fluid and it's like I never paused it, but I had to. Uh, I do this. I do this podcast through Soundtrap.com, and because it's a browser-based only thing, sometimes you have to go. Ah, let's let's pause it and save it so that I don't have to ramble for twenty minutes again. Um. Anyway. So so listen, yeah. If you're still listening, and there are some of you that do, and you have any questions, uh, stillsoberpod at gmail.com. If you have any, if you need to vent about sobriety, you can you can uh, you can email me. Also, make sure you message if you don't if you just want to message me directly. You you know make sure you say hey this is just for you. Don't mention mention this on the podcast where it might get heard by you know dozens so anyway that's I could have just ended it there instead of paused but uh, should have just held on for a couple of more minutes gone well that's it but uh, that isn't it uh, but yeah let me let me just say that I I hope that as I continue to do this I hope that I do improve and I hope that I come back and listen to these and go man I didn't know what I was doing when I would ramble for 30 minutes but now when I ramble for 30 minutes I know exactly what I'm doing because it's not really about that this is more I I figured out that this podcast is more of kind of like my meeting makes me kind of think about where I stand in my quote unquote recovery I don't really call it, I don't, it doesn't really feel like recovery it's just life just life and I'm not doing the, those doing that shit anymore and I'm just uh, re- hopefully replacing it with stuff that's productive to me those are the key by the way that's the key there to me you may not think it's productive to play Fallout 4 for two to three hours every other day but I like it makes me feel good and I get to cut it off and then go hang out with a real woman <laughs> yay girlfriend but yeah no that's that's how I get through the day sometimes but uh no things are I think things are doing alright it, and it's it's weird for an opiate crisis to explode right after you stop doing opiates and I wish I had more information to tell people that could help them. But unfortunately, they the only thing I can think of is is that they need uh, we just need funding for more um, heroin addicts and opiate addicts to to get into a treatment because because you need that you need you need a 90 day treatment center away from everything and away from your influences to get a to get a head start and it's still the the percentage of failure is high even at even in rehab which really sucks it's it's just it's a tough thing man it's uh even with my junkie thinking going ah i did it before you guys but it's that's just that's just the yeah that's the addict thought process that's still kind of there and occasionally rears its head and talks in my ear but uh anyway uh, yeah now that's if anybody has any questions not comments well I, i guess you could do a comment i'll probably just ignore it ignore it but if you had an actual legit question or a semi legit question still sober pod at gmail.com let me know all right well i think that should do it that's it for this week Uh, we will see you next week and i think maybe next week i'll do the i'll break down into more detail about how i got sober um like I'll, i'll give you a more detailed timeline and we'll go into that i think we'll do that next week so all right you guys Stay sober if you want. Uh, Just hang in there. It's just life, man. Don't take it too seriously. Bye. Red wine, a little smoke, a whole lot of loving. That's all I need. Make it through the night. Cold beer. I 
like I'm down. 